Hello Calc Kids, this is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. And today we're gonna to focus on logistic growth, differential equations, and how this stuff works in a BC calculus. For AB kids, again, you do not have to be doing this lesson. This is just a BC topic for the AP exam. All right, so logistic population growth. What in the world is that? Here's a graph of a logistic function. And if you remember from your pre-calc days, hopefully you, you saw this in your pre-calculus class and this is not a totally new thing. But if it is a new thing, I think you'll catch on to this. Based Basically, a logistic growth will have a ceiling or a cap. In this case, we could call it a limiting value or we could call it, uh, you see here, carrying capacity. They might call it different things. So it starts off small, it grows almost like it's exponential, but then it starts to slow down and it reaches this cap or ceiling. A real world application of this could be like a population growth with animals and how you think about if animals can't just grow forever or even human beings on the planet Earth. There's a lot of human beings, but it can't go on forever, right? You can't have an infinite number of humans on the planet. At some point, it has to have a limiting value for what the uh, what the planet could support. So a couple things I want to point out with this before we start go getting into some formulas. And that is right here at the point of inflection. Let's put a little dot. And this point of inflection is an important value because this value before it, the rate is increasing. Notice the population is growing faster and faster and faster and faster. After this point of inflection, the population is still growing, but it is slowing down. And so what we can say is a before and after point of inflection thing. To the left of this point of inflection, our growth rate is increasing. To the right of this point of inflection, the growth rate is decreasing. Now make sure you understand that is the growth rate. That is not the actual population. The population is increasing the whole time, but the rate at which it's increasing is slowing down here, or excuse me, speeding up here because it's increasing and here it is slowing down. So that's basically the uh, first, second derivative test type of a thing. So you can see it's concave up and then it's concave down. That goes back to unit five where we've practiced this a lot before. But that's a useful thing for us to be able to answer some of the questions that we're going to be faced with. So a logistic differential equation can usually be written in two ways that you're going to see. So this first way we have, if you'll notice here, we have this k times y, and notice that the y is the same as the dependent variable within this dy dt here. So whatever variable there is, that's the dependent, and it goes here as well. And then, uh, and then you have it up here once again. So you have this dependent variable twice. But the l here, this l represents the limiting value or the carrying capacity. So if we wanted to go back to this graph, this right here would be L. That's the same thing. You could just consider this your L, that line. Okay, Ooh, little arrow. So limiting value is L or carrying capacity. So that is on bottom of this fraction right here. It would also be possible to manipulate this thing algebraically and convert it into something else. So if I were to factor out from this and from this and bring it to the front, I'm going to factor out a 1 over L. And if I were to do that, think about this, so I divide out the L, you have this thing here where you have a 1 over L brought out, so it's now K over L. And now what happens here? Well, you end up with L minus Y. Now, how does that happen? Think about this. If you were to distribute back, take this, this 1L over and distribute here and then distribute here, it would become a 1 and then uh, this would just become the y. The reason I've got both of these written down is because you might see either form of these and you have to recognize that this represents a logistic differential equation. On the practice problems today, obviously we're practicing logistic, so it's gonna be a little bit easier for you. But if you were taking an exam or a practice exam and working through this, it, the problem is not likely to just throw out at you that this is a logistic. So you would have to recognize that it's in a logistic form. And that just comes with practice, recognizing it's one minus y over a number, this limiting value. Or you go here and you have to recognize, the big hint is if it's the dependent variable, y, and you, it shows up twice like this. That's the big hint to help you remember that it's a logistic. But it needs to be one of these two forms. Now, before we go on, I have to show you one more thing. Let's look at this graph. So if we have here, this, this point here, I'm gonna call that coordinate point t comma, t for time, comma, l over two. So this, point of inflection is halfway to the limiting value. So the reason that is so important is because that not only is that the point of inflection, but it is also the point in which you have uh, the max growth rate. So the maximum growth rate uh, occurs at y equals l over 
2. So when the y value is half of the limiting value for a logistic function, that is that population is when you are growing the fastest. Okay, so that's kind of a useful thing for calculating some things that you'll see here in our next examples. Okay, so let's do this. So first off, uh, the, the instructions here don't specifically tell us that this is a logistic uh, logistic function, a logistic differential equation, but because we're in this lesson and we're practicing that, yeah, yeah, but you would recognize that here's a y, there's another y, two y's, and it reaches that form. So which form is this? This is the one where it has one minus y over l. That's what this is. So that means that our limiting value is three because it's just right there on bottom. And then the y value of the point of inflection is halfway to the ceiling point, the limiting value. So halfway to three is just three halves. Okay, pretty simple, huh? That's not bad at all. So now on this one, we have to recognize that there's two y's here, but now it is of the form uh, where you have in the parentheses L minus y, all right? So it's a little bit different in this case with the, the ky in front of here, here the ky was in front of there. So now what are we doing? The limiting value is the L, which is 16, and then the y value of the point of inflection is halfway up to 16, which is just eight. So pretty easy stuff on this first part. Now these are the two things that are gonna answer most questions on the AP exam that deal with logistic functions. If it asks you for a maximum value, so maximum value of the logistic function, that's talking about the L, that is the max, L portion, like it's it's the highest y value that the function is going to get to. And then if it asks for the maximum rate, that is the point of inflection, the y value of the point of inflection, or other words, when y double prime changes from positive to negative, because if you're changing from positive, it's concave up, and then it jumps to concave down. And so we could also just say, well, this is when that equals zero and solve. If it's a free response problem, you're gonna to wanna to have to show your work. If it's a multiple choice problem, you know that that's gonna happen halfway up to L. So it's actually a pretty quick and easy problem. But again, if you were a free response, you would wanna prove it and by showing that the second derivative equals zero and then changes from positive to negative. Okay, so before I move on, let's just repeat something here. There's two different types of maximums we're looking at. The maximum value of the function versus the maximum rate of change. And those are two different things. Maximum value is the ceiling, that's the L. The maximum rate is half of L, okay? So just distinguish between the two. All right, so this next two questions, three and four, is actually exactly the same stuff, it's just different words. So instead of limiting value uh, or ceiling, I'm calling it carrying capacity. So you'll just see lots of variations of ways to see this. And so what's the carrying capacity? It's the highest this goes, so recognize this is one minus Y over L. So there's my L right there of 100. And then the maximum rate occurs, maximum rate occurs halfway to that limiting value. So it's at the point of inflection at y equals 50. So whatever this population rate was, when the population's at 50, that's when it's growing the fastest. Okay, then here we have, again, this is now the L. So instead of it's y over, over a number, it's L minus y. So the carrying capacity is seven. If I can write a seven, there we go. And then the maximum rate occurs at y equals halfway up to that carrying capacity, which is seven halves or 3.5. This next part is just to help you out on one of the problems in the practice. And that is you have a differential equation here that's just in this general form with no numbers in it. Could you solve for y? Could you get this to be what is y equal? So I just wanna show you how you would do this, but again, we're not gonna go through the whole thing. So what we would do is we've gotta get y by itself. So this has to do with separation of variables. What I'm gonna do is divide both sides by y times one minus y over L. So think about that. If I do that to both sides and then I get the dt over to the right side, all you're gonna be left with over here is this k. Everything else cancels. And then on the left side, you'll have one over this. And then that leads us to uh, partial fractions. Remember that linear partial fractions back in unit six, where you could then uh, take the integral of that using partial fractions and then work this out, and you'd end up with this form right here, where you get to this. And this form is a logistic function. This is like a standard form of a logistic function. For those of you who did this in pre-calculus, it might look a little bit familiar. Depends on how much time you spent on it. Uh, but that's basically how you do that. Okay, I just wanted to show you that that's why it's really nice if you have dy dt and you re recognize that it's a logistic uh, differential equation, it's so nice to figure out what the L is because you can just see it instead of having to put it in this standard form and then recognizing the L, which can take a while.
Here we go with the last two problems. This first one here, number five, we're gonna find a differential equation. So we're creating a differential equation to represent this situation. So let's start off with the dp dt. Uh, dp dt equals, that's they tell us what that is, the rate of change dp dt. And now we're going to say, we have to use one of the forms that we've already used, which was, let's go back and look at them, one of these two forms. So it could be either one. I, uh, I think on this one, it might be a little easier to use this second one, but it really doesn't matter. You'll end up with the same type of answer regardless. So let's start off with, we're going to say K, which is an unknown, K over L times P, right? So I'm gonna write that up here real quick. Okay, there we go. Now, why did I use a P here instead of a Y like our other equation has? It's because of the dependent variable. I know the dependent variable is a P because it's DP, DP, DT. So therefore, I know it had to be a P here and a P here. So now let's plug in what we know. The L is going to be our limit or our growing capacity here. And that capacity is 2,500. So that right there is my L. So I can say 2,500. Again, we don't know what the K is, so we just leave that as a K. And then uh, P is the number of people that are in the park, right? So I'm just gonna leave that as a P for now. And then I'm going to say the L minus P. So what is L again? I said 2,500 minus, and then the P, I'll just write a P again. Okay, so this is my formula. Now, what else do I know? I know that the P, is the number of people in the state park is 1200. So that P is right there. That's a P if the rate is 100. So that's a rate of change, my DP DT. So because it's people per hour. So now I can start setting this up. So I have 100 is my rate of change. K I don't know yet. I still know that it's 2500 on bottom. And then when the rate is 100, we have 1200 people in the park. So times 1200. And then uh, 2,500 minus, again, the P was 1,200. Now this just lets us solve for K. So we just do all the arithmetic here and solve for K. So let's see here, this is gonna, the thousands can cancel out. So I'm gonna get 12K over 25. And then that's, what is that, 1,300? And then from here, you just have to be good with solving with your fractions. Let's divide by 1,300. This becomes one over 13. And then I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal, so times 25 over 12 equals K, or in other words, K is equal to 25 over 13 times 12, 156, because I have a calculator on the side that helped me. All right, so 25 over 156, that's my value of K. So let's figure out what the final answer is for my differential equation, dp dt equals. So I have 25 over 25 over 156, but then I'm going to be dividing that by 2,500, or in other words, 2,500 like this. And then, uh, and then I have the rest of it, p times l, which was 2,500 minus the p. So now you can see here, you have a couple options to simplify this. You could take this one over 2,500 and distribute through here, make it a one, distribute through again, and just leave it over this. Or you could just simplify these right here. So either way you want to leave your answer, it's, it's both equivalent, it's just different forms, and you wanna make sure you get practice of doing both. Um, so what does this reduce to? Actually, I think it would be easier. No, let's not reduce it. It'd be easier to just distribute that. I think that makes this a little bit better. So 25 over 156, and then uh, P, because I'm taking this right here, this thing, and I'm gonna distribute to both of these spots. So now that becomes a one minus, and then this one is P over 2,500. And you can see that works because it's the other form. It wasn't this form we first started with. It's the other form where the L is on bottom, but the L is still the same thing it was well, like I initially started here. So you will use both of the forms. You just wanna make sure you can tell that they are equivalent to each other depending on how you manipulate your equations. And I should probably box that one because that is the answer. Our last question, find the carrying capacity. So the carrying capacity, what we're really saying is, what does L equal? That's what we're looking for. What is L? Well, if we could just rewrite this thing in a different form, the L would be obvious to us. So how about, um, in this case, instead of L minus P being this other factor here, I think it would be a little easier if we had it in the form uh, KY times 
1 minus y over l, right, for this one. So here's how we could get that. If we need a 1 to be in front, we basically are going to take this 4 fifths y and divide it out. So I will have uh, 4 fifths y times, now this is just a 1 because I just put 4 fifths y out, minus, now this is where it gets tricky because you have a fraction. So I'm going to have this weird fraction, and then I'm going to say times y. Okay, so this is, this is, that looks confusing. This is subtraction, that's a fraction. I'm gonna write something in this fraction. So instead of one over 150, I wanna do one over 150 divided by four fifths, because I just divided a four fifths out by factoring it. And so then that's the same thing as one over 150 times five fourths, because we don't divide fractions, that's too hard. So we multiply reciprocals instead. Uh, that reduces, five becomes a one, 150 becomes a 30, and then we're left with, 1 over 30 times 4, which is 120. Okay, so 1 over 120. All right, now that we have that, you can see that this is really y over 120. And once you have that, then you know 120 is on bottom. That is our L. So we know that the carrying capacity is L equals 120. All right, so you just have to manipulate it until you get it into one of the forms. All right, so we've covered everything on logistic differential equations. So rock that mastery check. And also that it's the last one for the unit. So rock that test too, and I'll see you back in unit eight.